Hey guys, and welcome to the Working Money Channel. Can it be any more freaking obvious to Fan Hubert bringing this to our attention? Hey, Hester Purse and the SEC, guess why Joseph Lubin had to let go of 60% of his employees during the bear market? Because he was funding his business with Ethereum sales. How many employees did Ripple let go? What are you saying? They grew? I mean, this guy never stops. Stefan Hubert bringing this to us uh, from back in December of 2018. Just a quick screen grab here. Consensus. Plans to spin out most of its startups and it's going to mean layoffs. So, you know, the fact that if you have to let employees go during a bear market, what does that mean, you know? If, uh, you know, the fundamentals of you paying employees have to do with Ethereum price, well, this is the only way I can cut this slice of pie. And I think Stefan Hubert here has hit the nail on the head very accurately. So uh, an interesting observation here. Wanted to thank him for posting that. We got some Ripple partner news here, guys. XRP Crypto Wolf bringing this to our attention. This has to do with their ODL partner, Bitso. So Bitso, they're launching a new Bitcoin and stablecoin yield feature in the Latin American region. The Mexico City-based exchange says users will earn rewards just for holding Bitcoin and stablecoins. And the feature apparently will allow clients to gain up to 15% annually on USD stablecoins. A stablecoin, as you guys know, uh, or may not know, is a cryptocurrency designed to be more stable than Bitcoin, Ethereum, and many other digital assets, which can have volatile price swings. Users also will be able to earn yields of up to 6% on Bitcoin, the exchange said, without providing details of how that would work. Uh, it just said that users would need to hold Bitcoin in their wallets. So holding Bitcoin, earning yield 6%, this is coming from the Bitso exchange, a Ripple partner, their ODL partner in the uh, Latin American corridor. Daniel Vogel is Bitso CEO and co-founder, and he said inflation continues to rise globally, and especially in Latin America. And with this new feature, we are giving our clients and the Latin American population as a whole a new way to increase their wealth in crypto. Bitso added that users will be able to withdraw the cryptocurrency they are earning yield on with no extra fees, lockups, or setup hassle. On other exchanges such as Coinbase, users need to specifically lock up their assets for an agreed period of time to earn rewards. So uh, that is going to be an interesting setup there. No extra fees or lockups. I know uh, some of you guys who are staking cryptocurrencies find that that instant staking, that no lockup time period hold, is something that's very attractive when staking certain cryptocurrencies. So we're hearing this, guys, from ODL On Demand Liquidity, Ripple Partner, Bitso. Interesting news here. Wanted to thank XRP Crypto Wolf for bringing that to our attention. We also have another one here, guys, from Am one on Twitter. Blockquake is to add Ripple's XRP farming staking derivatives funded by Token Sale. The exchange Token Sale is available globally, but US residents are excluded from the ICO, unfortunately. The reasons behind that were not revealed, but many have to do with the SEC's view of the initial coin offering. Blockquake has announced a zero fees crypto trading promotional offer, part of a lifetime membership available for the first million purchasers of the platform's native token Quake coin. And some of the cryptocurrencies, guys, that Blockquake are going to add, the trading platform will add Ripple's XRP, Cardano, ADA, Stellar Lumens, XLM, Chainlink, Bitcoin Cash, and USDC to the existing crypto offering. Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin, and Tether are uh, already, I guess, offered there. As to fiat currencies, Blockquake will continue Continue to fully support the US dollar and will add Canadian dollar, Euro, Japanese yen, uh, Australian dollar, and the GBP, the Great British Pound. Blockwake is also working on enabling deposit and withdrawal capabilities for non USD fiats and credit and debit card purchase options. So adding XRP to their platform, uh, unfortunately not available to US citizens, at least not as of yet. Of course, guys, that is all going to change once we get some clarity, I believe, in the US with regards to uh, XRP, with regards to Ripple, and I think by extension, many other cryptocurrencies. And something else that was just posted here from Yoshitaka Katao of the SBI Group uh, in Japanese, but let me just translate that real quickly. This has to do with the approval of a CMS acquiring license for Ripple Partner, the central bank, the monetary authority of Singapore. Why this is important? Well, SBI Digital Markets, a subsidiary of SBI Digital Asset Holdings, which provides financial services that make full use of digital asset solutions for institutional investors, they're pleased to announce that they have received their principal approval for the Capital Market Services or CMS license from the Singapore Financial Services Administration, the Monetary Authority of Singapore. So these guys already have a partnership with Ripple and now they are offering uh, their license, their Capital Market Services license to SBI Digital Markets. Of course, you know, you utilizing XRP. They have that common bond there. I don't see why they would not approve the license. The CMS license is necessary to provide institutional investors with services such as bond stock issuance and distribution of alternative products, advisory business and custody business of related businesses, 
and this principal approval is the goal of SBIDM in Singapore. This will be a major step towards building a digital asset ecosystem. So think of this for a second. The digital asset ecosystem is central to what they're doing. And uh, if we can extrapolate a little bit here, this license is providing institutional investors with traditional services like bonds, stocks, uh, issuance of uh, alternative products. So not so much cryptocurrency trading, but all the other applications that can be tokenized. And now that they're getting this license, digital asset ecosystem, this is what's going to be central for the tokenized economy, probably running on RippleNet, XRP. Of course, we know SBI uh, has deep ties with Ripple and uh, the Monetary Authority of Singapore, as I mentioned, is also a Ripple partner. So some interesting news there from Yoshitaka Katao. And continuing on the theme of Singapore, well, we have another Ripple partner, Airwallex. They're rolling out their virtual business debit cards and expense solutions in Singapore. So Global Fintech Airwallex announced this launch of the Airwallex borderless cards for its Singapore Singaporean clients today. The Airwallex Borderless Card is a virtual multi-currency Visa business debit card that enables businesses to make easy card payments online anywhere that Visa is accepted from Singapore to the rest of the world. And we know Visa is accepted at uh, most locations. I think it is the biggest credit card out there accepted at most locations worldwide. Singapore-based companies can now instantly generate and issue virtual multi-currency business debit cards to promptly pay third parties such as vendors and other online merchants with Airwallex's foreign exchange rates wherever Visa Visa cards are accepted. These virtual cards will enable Singapore businesses to transact in more than 140 currencies and expand into new markets. And so how will they make that efficient, fast, and ultimately affordable for their clients? Obviously, leveraging that RippleNet technology. Uh, and just down here, over the coming months, Airwallex plans on expanding its card functionality, including enabling physical cards for business owners and for their employees' work expenses and digital wallet integration. Uh, in addition to the borderless card, Airwallex is also launching its expenses solution. So Singapore, also one of those countries that is uh, deeply integrated with RippleNet technology. Airwallex has granted a major payment institution license from the Monetary Authority of Singapore under the Payment Services Act at the Singapore Fintech Festival. I reported on that uh, back in November. Uh, and here's a quote, today's virtual cards and expenses launch is another significant step towards a full rollout of our global payment offerings in Singapore. We strive to become an integral one-stop shop for any Singapore business requiring support with business finances across an entire transaction life cycle, and by doing so, empower them to manage and grow both their local and global operations exponentially. This coming from Arnold Chan, guys, Airwallex's head of growth for Singapore. Cross-border payment solutions, of course, this is what Airwallex does very well, leveraging RippleNet technology. Technology. This is why they're getting ahead and uh, rolling out more options for their clients, uh, specifically in Singapore, but likely will expand, uh, probably starting in that region of the world and then uh, possibly worldwide. Also, let's not forget the partnership with Visa, right? Visa did buy Earthport. Uh, I believe that deal was finalized in 2019. Earthport, another Ripple-enabled company, so we're seeing the partnerships merge, the synergy affect the ecosystem, eventually more demand to the XRPL will mean more demand for XRP and therefore higher prices for XRP. We're still waiting though, guys, in the US, we're still waiting for regulatory clarity. Stefan Hubert, bringing this interesting point up, Ripple's attorney, okay, Matthew Solomon, would discuss crypto regulation with current SEC attorneys and Stefan Hubert finds this very, very odd, considering, you know, the Ripple case is still going on. But that the SEC enforcement chief is now giving his speech together with Joseph Grunfest. Yes, the same guy, the former SEC commissioner that suggested to Jay Clayton that, hey, you know, we probably shouldn't sue Ripple, considering all the things that are transpiring. Yet, Jay Clayton decided to do the exact opposite and sue Ripple. So... On the docket here, guys, set for May 12th, cryptocurrency regulation, enforcement, and litigation. Matthew Solomon, he is a partner at Cleary, Gottlieb, Steen, and Hamilton, also Ripple's lead attorney on the SEC case. Uh, and so he's talking about cryptocurrency regulation. A conflict of interest, I'm sure he can separate himself from that. Also, keynote remarks by SEC Enforcement Director Gerbeer Gruwal. Okay, he's the SEC Enforcement Director. He's talking with Joseph Grunfest, William A. Frank, Professor of Law and Business, the Stanford Law School. So again, Joseph Grunfest did suggest to Jay Clayton way back when, when Jay Clayton was still the uh, acting commissioner at the SEC, not to sue Ripple yet. Jay Clayton clearly did not take his advice, so that's going to be an interesting panel. Also wanted to bring this to you guys from Wheezy here at Nerd Nation Unbox on Twitter. 
And here it is, ex-CFTC Jim Newsom and current chair Talbert. I think this is proof the Hinman speech was meant as guidance and not his personal opinion. Again, guys, this was taken before Gary Gensler took his post at the SEC. This is when Jay Clayton was still uh, the chair of the SEC. And Nerd Nation Unbox suggesting that this is proof the Hinman speech was meant as guidance and not his personal opinion. CFTC and the SEC worked together. And so just listen to this clip and you be the judge. That's great, Mr. Chairman. Um, as you well know, regulatory certainty is key or is crucial in, in any market, but especially in a, in a new market. Um, could you share with us some of your thoughts, some of your work and the CFTC's work with the SEC, uh, particularly in regard to the issuance of tokens and their classification? Uh, for example, whether it's a investment contract, a utility coin, a commodity, a currency, or, or otherwise, uh, do you foresee any additional guidance uh, from either the CFTC or the SEC uh, to provide further clarification in, in this whole new arena? Uh, absolutely. I think we can definitely foresee uh, uh, greater clarity uh, in information coming out of both agencies. Uh, I'm not sure quite when, um, but I can tell you that uh, working with the SEC on these issues and a whole host of issues has been has been a big part of what I do. Um, I have the privilege of talking with Chairman Clayton uh, often several times a week, uh, but 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 very frequently. And I know this is uh, this is an important item for him as well. Uh, for our part, we have tried to provide as much clarity as possible. To, to your point, it's really important that people understand what the rules of the game are, and then they can innovate accordingly. Um, we have made the determination, based on the SEC's determination that it's not a security or an investment contract, that Bitcoin and Ether are commodities falling within our jurisdiction. But really, the, qu the threshold question is, is largely whether something is a security or not. And that is the sole province of the SEC. Um, and so once they make a determination, uh, we then can take their determination, particularly if the determination is it's not a security. And then we can start thinking about it in terms of our own regime and trying to provide clarity around what people need to do uh, in terms of complying. So it sounds very clear here from Heath Tarbert. What the SEC has suggested were securities and what were commodities. Ethereum, Bitcoin, classified as something else. But, you know, Tarbert here saying, we are striving to give as much clarity as possible. And, uh, you know, this happened, I believe this clip was from uh, a little bit after the Hinman speech. It would have been in 2018. So is this proof, Heath Tarbert's proclamation that the SEC is trying to give as best guidance as possible? Clearly, this would mean that the SEC's lawyers in court are trying to hide the fact that the Hinman speech was not his personal opinion, and in fact, the guidance offered by the SEC at that time. I mean, it's still up for debate, but that's just my opinion. I want to hear what you guys think. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like the video if you like the content I'm providing. I always love hearing your comments. See you in the next one, guys.